Okay, so you've decided to buy a protein powder to help you hit your daily protein needs. Question is, which protein powder should you buy? I'm Ashley from IMFC and in today's video I'll be guiding you through the murky and often confusing world of protein powders where we'll unpack which way protein powders are really worth your money. All coming up in today's video. Now ideally we should all be hitting our daily protein targets from whole food sources whether that be animal or plant-based but there are situations where um, adding in a protein powder is just going to be very very beneficial at helping us hit our daily protein targets as there are situations in the day where you know getting all of your daily protein might be slightly difficult you know those of you that um, are very very busy have busy schedules and maybe don't have the time to you know prepare all the food and get all the protein in um, for those of you that just don't have very very big appetites you know especially in the morning times or maybe you know post workout where some people might not feel particularly hungry but maybe where those times of the day might be crucial in getting some protein in. Protein powders can just be a nice addition. But I often get asked, uh, which protein powder should I buy and which one's best? Um, and it can be super confusing for most people, especially as there are so many different types of protein powders out there on the market. Just a simple type into the search bar of a protein um, supplement company uh, gives us all of these protein options. And it's often just as confusing for me as it might be for you uh, when looking for a protein powder. But here is your quick and handy guide on how to choose the right protein powder for you. Okay, so let's start off with the most common sources of protein powder, and they're going to be the animal-based whey protein powders. And typically, you're going to come across three kind of main uh, types of whey protein powder. You're going to have the whey concentrate, the whey isolate, and the hydrolyzed whey. Now, in terms of the whey concentrate, that's going to or likely to be your cheapest option of whey protein, um, as typically that's going to have the least amount of uh, processing and filtration and the least amount of separation of the protein from the, 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 the fat and the, the lactose. Uh, this will mean, though, that um, per serving, it will be slightly higher in calories or the higher calorie option of the three is going to have uh, due to the fact that it has the least amount of separation of the fat and the lactose. So it retains more of the fat in the uh, per serving. Uh, so higher fat content, higher calorie content, but also it's going to have a slightly higher lactose content because it isn't as filtrated as other options, which means for any of you that suffer from you know lactose intolerance, um, the whey concentrate is likely going to be an option to steer away from. Now, for those of you that don't have any issue with dairy or, you know, if you have a little bit of lactose intolerance, but it's not that severe, um, then a whey concentrate could be a good option, um, depending on, again, some other, other key things. And, you know, because it's the least filtrated and it still retains a lot more of the fat and the lactose, um, per serving, it's going to have, compared to the isolate and the hydrolyzed whey, it's going to have a lower percentage of actual protein per serving. So typically, a whey concentrate starts at around 80% 80, 80 of the actual serving is going to be of good quality protein. For those of you out there that don't have a, an issue with dairy and want a cheap, you know, quick protein source, animal based, it's a, a very, very good option. Um, again, even though it's only 80% or starting 80% of uh, protein per serving, it's still a good option. It still contains all of the essential amino acids, all of the branch chain amino acids for muscle building. But if lactose is an issue, and you prefer um, a protein that is, you know, a protein powder that is higher in protein per serving, then the next two options are going to be uh, more up your alley. So the first one is going to be the whey protein isolate. Now, whey protein isolates uh, you typically start around 90% of protein per serving, so an extra 10% of protein per serving compared to the concentrate. And this is due to just a further amount of um, processing, filtration, and separation of the fat and the lactose away from the protein. So more fat and more um, lactose are removed from the, from the whey to leave uh, a more purer form of whey protein, so 90% typically. This means, again, that it's going to be a lower serving of calories um, because the, the fat and the lactose have, or more fat and lactose have been removed. So per serving compared to the concentrate, um, a lower 
amount of calories in. So for those of you that maybe are dieting, um, long-term dieters who want to you know, maximize the amount of protein for the least amount of calories, then again, a whey isolate is going to be a better option. Of course, in many cases, it does mean that the price per serving is slightly more expensive than the whey concentrate, again, due to the extra processing that's involved. Um, so if uh, price is an issue, you know, again, we're not talking uh, a big price increase, but if price is a consideration, um, then that's something to keep in mind. And the final option is going to be the hydrolyzed whey protein option. Now, this is often the kind of most expensive option. Um, per serving, but it's also the option that has the highest quality of protein, as there is extra kind of filtration steps in this in the hydrolyzed way, and the addition of kind of um, pre-digested enzymes in the protein, which means that. Well, when you take the, the serving of protein, um, because of the partially digested enzymes, um, the absorption rate of this protein is going to be slightly quicker than the whey concentrate and the whey isolate. And again, um, because of the extra filtration, the extra processing involved in making this uh, type of protein, there's again going to be uh, even more reduced levels of um, fat and lactose and total calories. So again, it's going to be per serving, one of the lowest in terms of calories and fat that you're going to get uh, against the other two. And of course, you know, because of marketing, it's often you know described or perceived to be the best for performance and recovery because it's the fastest absorbing protein. So if you think about having protein after your workout, um, it's often thought have your protein straight after your workout. You know, start the rebuilding process, the recovery process, and the hydrolyze away is going to be the best one to do that. Um, but I would argue there are a couple of reasons why um, the hydrolyzed whey isn't probably necessarily that important to have over a whey concentrate or a whey isolate. And that's primarily most of you or most of us aren't professional athletes where optimal recovery um, and adaptation post-session is the kind of the, the thing that's going to make the big difference. You know, maybe if you're in the middle of a tournament situation and you're going to have some protein between, uh, I don't know, matches, then maybe it will be a, a good time to have that. But for most of you, your next training session or your next, you know, exercise session is more than likely going to be 24 hours or maybe even longer. Um, so having a whey protein that absorbs a little bit quicker and it's more expensive because of that is probably not that necessary. However, um, one situation in which the hydrolyzed whey protein might be a better option are for those people that are uh, dieting. As there is some research that shows that the hydrolyzed whey protein, when compared against the um, whey protein isolate, might actually lead to better uh, muscle retention and less muscle loss um, when dieting long term. Now, the mechanisms that are at play um, are not fully understood yet, but some kind of theory goes that due to the fast absorption rate and the, the greater insulin release from the hydrolyzed whey protein versus the whey protein isolate might be a contributing factor to uh, muscle retention and less muscle loss during weight loss. And as you can see from the screen here, in this study from Power et al. 2009, um, and they looked at the insulin response to a 45 gram dose of both a whey protein isolate and a hydrolyzed whey protein. Now, uh, even though the authors found similar responses um, to other measures in this study, and as you can see from the graph here, the, the insulin response from the whey protein, from the hydrolyzed whey protein, was 28% higher than that of the whey protein isolate. And it also peaked at a much later time at 60 minutes compared to 40 minutes um, against the whey protein isolate. Now, why do we care about a 28% increase in insulin uh, secretion in the hydrolyzed whey protein versus the whey protein isolate? Well, if you think about it, when we are dieting, we are putting our bodies in a catabolic state where we are breaking down tissue um, with the aim of breaking down fat tissue to lose body fat. But also, um, when we're dieting, we're also going to be breaking down muscle tissue, and that's uh, unavoidable. And now, since insulin is an anti-catabolic hormone, um, the theory then goes that if you have a greater um, uh, concentration of insulin in the body following food, we may then um, protect a little bit of muscle loss and therefore aid muscle retention because of that. And well, how much of an effect does this extra circulating insulin have on protecting muscle mass? Uh, well, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of research on it. So the evidence is rather unconclusive um, as to um, how much effect this is going to have for the individual. 
But if you have some extra cash to splash on the hydrolyzed whey protein, uh, you as an individual might get some benefit on some extra muscle retention whilst you're dieting. Of course, you're likely not going to know how much muscle you're retaining or losing compared to the, uh, the whey protein isolate or concentrate. But if you're thinking about being as optimal as possible, um, you might get some benefit. Of course, you can uh, you know, retain muscle mass during dieting with a whey protein concentrate or a whey protein isolate. The hydrolyzed whey protein might just help you retain that little bit more muscle mass over a longer period. Again, depends how long you're dieting, how hard you're dieting for. Um, so there are a lot of things to consider. And one of the things to consider is this meta-analysis from Castro et al. 2019. Uh, this analysis of 10 trials comparing the effects of whey protein concentrate versus whey protein isolate versus the hydrolyzed whey um, led to the author to conclude that there is no positive effect uh, for fat-free mass gain, muscle gain, uh, regardless of the type of whey protein used um, or the percentage quality of those proteins or the physical activity, which in you know, layman's terms mean that Either of those proteins kind of equate to the same amount of muscle gain. Um, so neither is necessarily superior for muscle gain. Um, but as I mentioned from the other study, potentially the hydrolyzed whey protein might be better at retaining muscle mass when you're dieting. Okay, guys, so there you have it. Now, when it comes to muscle building, all three options um, get the job done when it comes to building muscle. But, you know, choose a whey protein concentrate when you want to keep costs down and if lactose isn't really an issue for you. You could choose the hydrolyzed whey protein if you have a little bit of extra cheddar cheese because it's a little bit more expensive and if you want to be optimal in retaining muscle mass or preventing muscle loss uh, during a dieting phase. And then you could opt for the whey protein isolate if you have some issues with lactose and you want a low lactose uh, protein powder, or if you want somewhere in the kind of mid range in terms of price and you want something that's going to be a little bit more better, higher quality of protein compared to the concentrate. Um, now, if you have any comments or questions, then go ahead, drop me a message in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer any of your um, kind of protein related questions, whether it be on what we've talked about today or any other kind of specific needs to yourself. Um, but from me, for now, that's all. And I will see you next video.